Hi everybody, it's Miss Heather here at Conservatory of the Ozarks. Um, honestly, it kind of kills me to make this video because, to be frank, this is just me begging for help again. <laughs> um, back in September 2020, I realized the conservatory had lost too many students during COVID and the conservatory would not be able to continue paying its bills. I had hoped the conservatory would receive some funding from the Greene County CARES Act, but at that point it had not materialized. <laughs> I also started a GoFundMe campaign for the conservatory, but although it was touching to see so many people donate to the campaign, we just hadn't raised enough money um, even to pay for one month of the conservatory's bills. So we plan to close the conservatory forever on the last day of September, 2020. And all of the teachers at the conservatory, including myself, made plans to move teaching our students from the conservatory to teaching online or out of our homes beginning October 1st. Then <laughs> we had a totally unexpected miracle because of a news report on KY3 by a reporter named Abby Taylor. Thanks to Abby's report, John and Donna Morris gave a very generous donation, which along with the smaller donations from the GoFundMe campaign um, allow the conservatory to stay open for three months until the end of 2020. But since the conservatory was saved from closing literally the day before <laughs> it was scheduled to close, some of the teachers were not able to stay on as they had already made other arrangements for their studios. Of course, that caused the conservatory's enrollment to drop even further. As a result, we reached our very lowest enrollment since the conservatory had opened in 2008. The conservatory pays its bills through something called studio fees. Each teacher at the conservatory pays a $25 fee for each monthly student slot at the conservatory. That is why our student enrollment numbers are so important for the conservatory's survival. Up until September, uh, I had always had to pay studio fees just like all of the other teachers. But since I thought the conservatory was going to close, I purchased a new home with room for me to move my teaching studio into the basement. <laughs> and uh, I committed to paying a bigger monthly mortgage payment kind of in lieu of studio fees since I thought the conservatory was going to be closing and I wouldn't be paying studio fees anymore and I needed you know my house I was at before was very small there was no way I could have taught out of it so I had to take on a bigger house with a bigger mortgage um, as a result I can no longer afford to pay studio fees for my students to help the conservatory out with its bills and it always was a long-term goal that eventually I wouldn't have to pay studio fees because obviously I put in a ton of extra hours every week, every month, every year that I don't get paid for. So it always kind of has seemed sad that I have to pay for the privilege of teaching at the conservatory, <laughs> uh, just like everybody else does, even though I'm the one who started it and I, not to sound whatever, but I put in a lot more work and time than anybody else does and I've put in a lot more money than anybody else has but um, that's just the way it always had been because otherwise the conservatory couldn't pay its bills if I didn't pay my fair share um, but COVID has forced my hand so now I have no choice I cannot continue paying my studio fees which means that either the conservatory will have to be financially self-sufficient or it will fail. <laughs> um, I had hoped that 2020 would be the year when I could choose not to pay studio fees anymore because things were going really well when we started 2020 and I thought this is the year. Um, 
we keep kind of reaching the long-term goals slowly over time and I'm like this is the year when I'll be able to have an assistant who can do all the administrative work and I'll be able to pay her and I'll be able to stop paying my studio fees because we've been paying you know for the assistant position for a little while and we we're kind of just inching towards reaching the next goal <sighs> But I never would have imagined that I would stop <laughs> paying my studio fees because of these crazy reasons. <laughs> but of course, that strikes another blow to the conservatory's enrollment numbers because as far as the conservatory's budget is concerned, all of my students in my studio are no longer contributing studio fees to the conservatory's income. And I don't feel that there's really anything I can do about that uh, if I or to continue paying my studio fees, I wouldn't be able to pay my mortgage and I would be homeless. <laughs> so, um, that doesn't really feel like an option to me. <laughs> um, but we did have more good news in December because the CARES Act came through for us, which provided more funding so that we would have enough to get through the end of February or maybe March, no matter what happened, no matter how many students we had, so having the gift of being able to stay open six months beyond what we could actually afford was an incredible opportunity for the conservatory. We wouldn't have made it through the summer even, except for the government, you know, gave us some money through the PP lo PPP loan thing. And um, our landlord even really kindly gave us a break on our rent for a couple months. Um, otherwise we wouldn't have made it through the summer even. And to be honest, I went into debt myself because I just thought originally that if we could just kind of get through this, I, I, I think most people are, were the same. I thought COVID would be this little blip that would, you know, there'd be a shutdown for a month and then maybe everything would go back to normal. So I was like, I'll just, you know, go into debt to pay for this or that to keep the conservatory going because you know you feel the weight of I'm responsible for all of these people's jobs and the students lessons and stuff so if I can just keep it going a little bit longer everything surely will go back to normal soon and everything will be okay but that is not what happened <laughs> um, when I stood in the conservatory's lobby on September 30th 2020 facing the future I really had no idea what to expect. The conservatory had sustained so many big hits during COVID. I really didn't know if we would be able to recover and survive and eventually thrive again. Um, even though things had been going so well before COVID, I felt completely uncertain as to whether or not we would ever be able to reach that level again after, like I say, taking so many hits financially. I had never experienced a year like 2020 when we suddenly lost nearly half our enrollment in a matter of weeks and then went months with no new students signing up. I don't ever remember that ha either of those things happening before. Normally we get calls, you know, every week, people signing up and it is normal for people to quit too, but usually it's, you know, maybe two or three in the month. And usually more people than that would start. So, you know, there's a slow growth upwards over time. Not such a huge hit all in, in one go like that. Um, but like I say, originally I assumed the COVID situation would resolve pretty quickly. And I thought if we could just get through the summer, we would have our normal back to school influx of new students and even though we might be struggling still because we had lost so many, we would be okay. Um, and then we could just gradually recover once COVID went away. <laughs> the COVID didn't go away. And um, there was no back to school rush in 2020. We did not get any calls. Uh, that's never happened before. <laughs> and that was when I had to come to terms with the fact that all the work 
I had invested in the conservatory for my entire adult life was going to be lost. I started the conservatory from nothing, using an empty room in a church in lieu of being paid to be the church's music director when I was 24 years old. Uh, honestly, I probably wouldn't have started conservatory of the Ozarks, except it just didn't exist already. <laughs> Uh, in my mind, I had envisioned the kind of organization where I wanted to spend my teaching career. And if that organization had already existed in 2008, I probably would have been happy to just apply for a job there and teach my students there, build my studio there. But as far as I know, there is no other conservatory in the Ozarks. So I felt compelled to attempt to create one, you know, myself. And I hated the idea that my dream from so many years ago was now going to fail. After I put in so much effort to build my dream into reality, after starting with nothing, <laughs> literally nothing, all I had was that room. <laughs> um, my heart was breaking. <laughs> as I began to actively work to tear apart my life's work bit by bit so we could close. I sold my pianos at the conservatory. I hate thinking about that. Um, I cried like as I watched them just roll out the door. <laughs> I had to tell all of the teachers Sorry, I gotta get a Kleenex. I actually practiced this so I wouldn't get emotional, get all the emotions out beforehand, but uh, if you follow my channel, you know me. I just can't seem to get through a video without crying. At least these days, I don't know. I used to, I think everybody can relate. It's like it used to just be kind of a happier world than it is right now. There's a lot of things to be kind of sad about, it seems like. I had to tell the teachers at the conservatory, each of them, that after all of their years of service, I had failed them and the conservatory, and I could no longer provide them with a place to earn a living doing the work they loved. I had to tell all the students at the conservatory that they could no longer pursue their development in the arts with the teacher that they loved at the conservatory. And they could no longer participate in monthly recitals and they could no longer collaborate with their classmates at the conservatory because I had no power to keep the conservatory going any longer. The one nice thing about that whole terrible time was reading all of the poignant comments that students, teachers, families of students and teachers, former students and teachers, and members of just our local community posted on social media about the effect the conservatory had on their lives. It meant so much to me to read how the conservatory provided college prep and a career pathway for so many of the children who studied art, music, and drama here. I loved reading testimonials from leaders of various community organizations for which the conservatory students and teachers had volunteered to perform over the years. The conservatory's community outreach performances, fundraisers, and donations had helped raise thousands of dollars over the years for many wonderful causes like making strides against breast cancer, the Springfield Association for the Blind, Springfield Regional Opera, the Friends of the Garden, and Single Moms Rock to name a few. And I loved seeing students at the conservatory learn how they could impact their world for the better through sharing their talents 
with the community. So powerful to, to learn that as a child. And reading all of these kind, heartfelt comments just made me feel even more heartbroken that my dream of having a fine arts community in the Ozarks had failed. I felt alone and I felt afraid because most of the teachers with bigger studios had left the conservatory. I didn't blame them for leaving. I could offer no certainty that the conservatory would be able to remain open after the six months of funding we received ran out. Also, <laughs> one day's notice of such a big change of plans is so sudden for a teacher to just totally change direction. Of course, in my heart, I had hoped when I messaged all the teachers to ask if they would be willing to stay if we got a donation which would enable the conservatory to stay open. You know, of course, I had hoped they'd all say yes. <laughs> and um, of course, I hoped they would all be like, yeah, I wouldn't have any of these students if it wasn't for the conservatory. And I feel loyal to the conservatory and I want to be a part of the conservatory. I want to stay and help the conservatory succeed and I want to be a part of the conservatory's future and I want it to be a part of my future. Um, but I know that is an unrealistic expectation and I don't hold it against any of them that they felt they had to leave. I probably would have done the same thing, honestly. I mean, you, you have a chance to make more money because you just can keep all your students and you don't have to pay studio fees. You don't have to drive to the conservatory. I mean, you can't blame them for making that choice. But it doesn't change the fact that the fact that they left, may, you know, was hugely detrimental to the conservatory's chances of survival, <laughs> unfortunately. So... As I stood in the lobby at Conservatory of the Ozarks on September 30th, 2020, I was thinking over all of these things. How sad I was that many of the teachers weren't going to stay and be supportive of the conservatory. How nervous I was about our long-term financial solvency since I wouldn't be able to help by paying studio fees anymore. How afraid I was that we would not have any calls from new students wanting to enroll at the conservatory since that had been the pattern up until then and how uncertain I was that we would be able to recover all of our lost ground and be able to stand on our own two feet financially in six months after you know going through so many things I just didn't know if we could recover before the six months of funding ran out in addition to those feelings, I also felt a new feeling of huge responsibility. <sighs> Originally, I felt the conservatory was closing and I felt so sad about it because I thought I would lose all of my time and my money and my energy um, and I had invested all of that myself. And of course, you know, that alone, that's, like I said, heartbreaking. It was really sad. I felt really upset about it, but at least it's only mine, <laughs> you know, it's my dream, my money, my time, my energy. But now I had the weight of knowing that my friends and family and strangers, and even my government, <laughs> my country, <laughs> had um, sacrificed to contribute their own money to help my dream of having a conservatory in the Ozarks come true and to continue. And I hated the thought <sighs> that we could still fail and then I would not only be wasting my time and money but also theirs. So even though I didn't know what the future held, just like everybody else during this weird time, 
I fully committed myself to rebuilding the conservatory from the ground up at that point. You know, I thought if the conservatory does fail in the end, I didn't want to feel that it was because I was lazy and didn't do my part to put the donated funds to good use. Oh my goodness, I don't know why I'm always such a mess. Some people can just talk about sad things and they just seem so poised and calm. And if I try to talk about like a bird dying or something, <laughs> like the tiniest little sad thing, I just like burst in tears. I'm so sorry. Just ignore. Just ignore the fact that I am like so overly emotional. I don't know why I'm like that. <laughs> I always want to be the person who can just like be so collected and calm that instead I'm the person who tries to do videos and then just cries and has to blow her nose the whole time. <laughs> so sorry. But <clears throat> over the next few months, I obtained a new, better pianos to replace the old ones that we had to sell. That wasn't all on me. You know, um, we had some really good luck or blessings, <laughs> depending on your perspective, um, and got some really great deals. And a couple donated a piano to us because they saw about what we were going through on the news. I advertised for and hired new faculty and staff to work here and I trained them as quickly as possible. I brought furniture and decorations from my own home <laughs> to freshen up the lobby and the studios um, at the conservatory just to try to help us have a fresh start and to help if we did get new students that they would feel welcome here. The students we currently had would want to stay, that the teachers would feel wel welcome and want to stay. Uh, I just worked diligently to maintain the conservatory's good online presence through updates on our social media platforms and our website. And I worked really hard to make our performance events as special, meaningful, and memorable as possible for our students, for their families, and for our teachers. And one of the parents at the conservatory, Dr. Elishel V. Janarthanon, even generously donated funds to provide a really extra special Halloween and Christmas recital for conservatory students in 2020. Since September, my weeks have been nonstop work. <laughs> I kind of thought I was past that point in my career, <laughs> the part where you're really being an entrepreneur and just like constantly working, working, working. But like I say, it's like starting over again from the ground up with almost nothing. So like recently, a typical sort of day for me has meant I get to the conservatory at about 9 a.m. I spend about three hours training the conservatory's new administrator. Then at noon, I usually begin teaching my students, teach them till about seven at night. <laughs> And then um, I usually spend the evening working on things like the conservatory's social media posts, budget, website updates, uh, faculty recruitment, etc. All those little things that have to happen. Somebody has to make sure they happen. Uh, I've spent my free time on the weekends trying to make improvements to the studio, driving around looking for potential new pianos, researching possible new locations with cheaper rent where we could move planning the conservatory's 2021 performance calendar the best I can. <laughs> um, I've spent many late nights here at the conservatory trying to shore up any shortcomings on our part so we can be the best studio possible. I'm really trying to give my all to keep the conservatory going until we have the funding for the conservatory to be autonomous again. <laughs> If I'm being honest, I've been filled with uncertainty this whole time. After going months with no new students, I had no confidence that I would be able to rebuild the conservatory, no matter how hard I tried. But weirdly, I have no idea why, we started getting calls again. At first we got calls because people saw all of the reports on KY3, Color 10, Springfield News Leader, local radio stations, um, 
saying we were going to close. And then people saw the follow-up reports saying we literally had a miracle and would be able to stay open. But um, even after the media buzz had like died down, we continued getting calls. And when I say calls, I mean, you know, calls from people inquiring about signing up for lessons here. This week, we've actually had so many calls. Like, it's been hard, like, the last few weeks for me to keep up with them. Like, so many calls, I'm really happy to take careful notes because I can't keep it just in my head, what's going on. Like, I have to write everything down because there are so many. I'm overwhelmed by them. <laughs> um, and it was not like that last year at all. <laughs> so... I'm not totally sure why that started happening or why it's continued to happen. But whatever the reason, it has been very encouraging. <laughs> um, seeing the new teachers begin their tenure at the conservatory has also been very encouraging. Somehow, it's like just exactly the right teachers that we need right now are the ones that have come along at exactly the right time or that were able to stay. I don't know. It does kind of feel like a sign to me, like this was the right thing to do. This is the right direction to be going. I could be wrong because I'm sure that's just the sign that I'm hoping for because of course that's the outcome I want. But genuinely that's how it feels to me. It feels like this, this is supposed to happen. It doesn't feel like the conservatory is just supposed to end. So now, on January 15th, 2021, I feel like I'm standing at the edge of a cliff. Instead of looking into the future and seeing a horizon stretched out in front of me, all I can see is a precipice looming before the conservatory sometime around the end of February or March, when our current funding will run out. <laughs> it is embarrassing to ask for help. I hate it. <laughs> I've always felt I could succeed on my own and I could take care of myself and I hate <laughs> to admit that I have failed and I hated to ask for help back in September. I hated to admit that all the grown-ups were right <laughs> and I was an idiot to have chased my dream of starting my own business and earning a living through music. <laughs> And um, my inclination now is to quietly throw in the towel and just accept there's no way that the conservatory will be able to make it past the time when our funding will run out. That would be less desperate, less embarrassing, and honestly easier. <laughs> um, but I am humbly putting this request out there for all of the world to see anyway, <laughs> um, once again. I'm asking for help. <laughs> Without it, I don't know how we'll make it. The reason I feel compelled to ask for help rather than quietly giving up is threefold. <laughs> First, um, ugh, I can't stand the idea of letting down all the people who've already donated their money to help the conservatory stay open. Second, after seeing the public outpouring of appreciation for the conservatory's presence in the community, I can't stand the idea of just giving up and it just doesn't exist anymore. All those things in the past are just in the past and none of those things will happen anymore in the future. It just feels like something that's worth fighting for and even asking for help and admitting that I failed if that's what it takes. <laughs> And thirdly, I really am convinced that we do have a chance of succeeding. Our enrollment has been climbing a little bit each month since September, and we have better studio equipment than we did before COVID. We have a great roster of instructors who are eager to teach at the conservatory. And I really think we will be po poised for success if we can just find a way to bridge the gap between where we are right now and, you know, where we will be at the end of COVID somehow. 
Um, I'm working right now to apply for the second round of PPP and CARES Act funding, but I don't know when or if we will be approved. I don't know how much we would receive in the second round of funding. I don't know if it would be less um, or the same. I just have no idea. <laughs> so, in conclusion, the whole point of this very long explanation is, please, I'm begging you, help my conservatory survive. I will keep giving my all to help the conservatory grow right up until we reach our very last penny. <laughs> but my dream of a conservatory existing in the Ozarks region will die unless we're able to secure funding to carry us through the next several months. I know there are so many difficulties facing people right now and I will totally understand if no one is able to donate. Um, I feel bad to ask for help when there are so many people around the world suffering right now um, going through things that are way less than a music studio closing. <laughs> I know there are endless ways you could donate your money to good causes right now and to important causes. But if you are watching this right now and you are able to help and you feel led to make a difference for the conservatory, please donate to our GoFundMe or call me at the conservatory at 417-592-1756 if you would like to talk with me about it or ask any questions um, or donate, you know, directly with a check or PayPal contribution or whatever. Um, I truly feel that we are so close to a bright future. For some reason, I feel so full of hope that the conservatory will be okay. And I have such a sense of certainty that I owe it to all the people who have already donated and all the teachers who have risked their careers to either stay at the conservatory or start teaching at the conservatory during this difficult time when I have no guarantee that the conservatory will succeed, that I have to ask for help. Because it's clear to me that I'm not no longer able to hold this dream together on my own. I can't shake the feeling that we are right on the edge of being able to thrive for years to come, but I just don't have the power to bridge that gap by myself, unfortunately. <laughs> um, at this point, the conservatory is either going to grow, you know, beyond me and my resources and what I can provide, or it will die inside of my own heart. Um, so I have no idea what the future holds or what to expect. No one does, but this is my plea for help. <laughs> and I hope that, I hope that the um, CARES Act and the PPP will come through for us and that it will be enough and nobody would need to donate, but those things just take so long to come through seems like we can't count on that happening before we run out of funding. So please do consider helping us out if it wouldn't put you in a hard spot and, and you feel like this is something that, that means a lot to you that, that you could feel good about contributing to. Anyways, I hope everybody is safe and healthy and happy and warm because it's really cold today. <laughs> and um, I will do another update video later. Bye-bye.